From Chris 6 News, this is special coverage of the 2018 midterm primary election. And thanks for joining us on this election night. Voters here in the Coastal Bend and across the state went to the polls today in the nation's first midterm primary. And there are major races on the ballot. One of the biggest is the race for the 27th Congressional District. Blake Farenthal holds, holds that seat. Now, as you may recall, though, the congressman announced that he would not be running for re-election after admitting that his office in Washington had created a hostile work environment. So today there were 10 candidates vying for his seat. Six of them are Republicans, and right now, no single candidate has the majority of the votes needed to win without a runoff. As you can see, Beck Brune and Michael Cloud are the front runners right now, and we spoke with both of them tonight. We're feeling really good. Uh, we're very encouraged by the results. We were outspent uh, two to one, but the results aren't showing that. Uh, our campaign is really based on relationships and, the, and grassroots workers. We feel very good about what we're seeing this far. Of course, we got a lot of long ways to go as far as what's been reported, but we feel really good about where we are and excited to be at the at the end of the first step. You know, four Democrats are also running for that very same congressional seat. Raul Barrera is in the lead with about 35 percent of the vote. Yes, you can see it right there. And uh, Ronnie McDonald is right behind him with 27 percent. And we spoke with Barrera tonight. Take a listen. Experience counts also because I'm, uh, even though Mr. McDonald, I know his background, he knows my background, and I feel I stand the edge because I'm a people's person. I want to help the people. Now, by the way, District 27 represents almost 740,000 people from Nueces County all the way up to Wharton and Bastrop counties. Now, as the primary results are coming into focus, here's Chief Investigator Rick Spruill now to revisit the issue of residency in that race. Ten candidates, six Republican, four Democrat for the 27th district seat. Several, including some of tonight's top vote getters whose residency we highlighted in January. And as polls closed and results trickled in, we watched as Democrat Roy Barrera, who lives here, and Republican Breck Brune, who recently moved back, pulled most of the votes in Nueces County. So here in Nueces County, does residency matter? It's a split decision. Down here, uh, Beck Brune has the advantage because he has moved back. He had family ties in Nueces County proper. But I think as you get out further in the district, I think it could be a different story. But will it be a campaign topic? heading into the general election. Depends on if the candidates are willing to challenge each other on the issue of residency. Uh, but for me, it will always be just because I want to know that they're here, they're invested, and they have my issues and values and beliefs in mind when they're representing me at the U.S. Congress. And that was our chief investigative reporter, Rick Sproul, reporting. Now, one of the U.S. Senate seats for Texas is on the ballot. Seven candidates are now trying to unseat Senator Ted Cruz. Five Republicans are on um, that ballot right now, including the incumbent Ted Cruz. But you can see there um, he's holding steady. He has a huge, not just a big, but a huge lead over his four challengers with 85 uh, percent support thus far. On the Democratic side, there are three uh, candidates there vying for that very office. Um, as of right now, Beto, Beto O'Rourke, who is a, a congressman right now, is leading that race with 61 percent support. Well, now on to the governor's race. Incumbent Greg Abbott, one of three names on the GOP ballot today. Abbott currently has 90 percent of the vote, and it looks pretty certain that he will move on to the November general election. Now, the Democratic side of the race is much more crowded with nine candidates. And as you can see, former Dallas County Sheriff Lupe Valdez in the lead with 42 percent. And Andrew White has 29 percent. Now, if those numbers hold up. Those two would meet in a runoff election in May. And Texans are also voting for a lieutenant governor. Incumbent Dan Patrick is uh, facing Scott Midler in the Republican primary, but not much of a challenge there because it appears that Patrick is headed for a comfortable win there with 75 percent of the vote. On the Democratic side, however, the race is a lot closer. Uh, we have Mike Collier there with 53 percent support um, and uh, Michael Cooper there trailing him with 46 percent support on the Democratic side. And a close race expected for Commissioner of the Texas General Land Office, the incumbent George P. Bush facing three challengers on the Republican side. And one of them is former Land Commissioner Jerry Patterson. Bush has 58 percent of the vote right now, leading Patterson by about 28 points. And two Democrats also running for land commissioner. Miguel Suazo is beating out Tex Morgan 69 to 31 percent. 
Now on to a local race getting a lot of attention. A new judge will sit on the bench for the 148th District Court. That's after Judge Guy Williams was suspended in November following his indictment on two counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon in connection with a road rage incident that was reported last April. Now on the Republican side, we have defense attorney Mark Stolle running against former city councilman and defense attorney Bill Kelly for the nomination. And as you can see, Mr. Kelly is in the lead handily with 58%. We spoke with him earlier and he said he felt like his entire career has been in, pre in preparation, that is, for a judge's seat. I feel as though those experiences, plus my experience on the city council, being out and resolving neighborhood problems and getting to know people in the neighborhoods, so I'll have a better understanding of the people that come before me. Now, on the Democratic side, former district attorney and former city attorney Carlos Valdez got the win here with 59% support over attorney and Corpus Christi native Deborah Rios. And we spoke with Valdez about his victory tonight. I don't think there's any uh, case or any issue that would come before the court that I haven't been involved in, that I've tried already in the past. So um, and based on that experience, I'm hoping that people will, will, will look at it and, and be willing to support my candidacy. All right, it'll be an interesting race to watch there. And joining us now to decipher the results tonight is Dr. David Smith of Texas A&M Corpus Christi. And Doc, when we spoke earlier, you said there were several things that surprised you today. There were, and originally I was I focused on the state race in terms of the governor, uh, but now I. I'm really a little more surprised that we're seeing two potential runoffs in the 27th district, uh, both the Democrat and the Republican candidates. Uh, and again, I, I think the potential runoff for the Democrats in the uh, gubernatorial race also. Okay. And, uh, and so let's talk about the Democrats right now. As, as a national party, they've been very excited Absolutely. about this election, uh, about their prospects even right here in the red state uh, of Texas. Uh, but here's the thing, the Republicans have controlled the state legislature for two decades. Do the Democrats have a realistic chance of any victories heading into November? I think there, as we talked earlier, I think there's some there's some real potential in the state legislature, mm -hmm. uh, but given the, the incumbency advantage that the Republicans enjoy in the executive offices, I think it, it's gonna be a hard push. Uh, but I, I do believe that Lupe Valdez or, or Andrew White, but it, I, it looks like Lupe is going to have a, a larger margin. She, she may potentially be a good candidate to give uh, Governor Abbott a run for his money. Well, looking ahead now to the runoffs and to the general elections, which races would you suggest we keep an eye on? Uh, so, absolutely the 27th district. I think that's yeah. going to be one of the biggest ones. Uh, the gubernatorial race, I, I would even watch the lieutenant governor race. I think that's going to be an interesting race uh, as well. And then some, just some of those those other vacant or open seats, as you, if you will, uh, throughout the state of Texas. I think there's going to be some really good fights coming up for the general election uh, to see who wins those, either Republican or Democrat. And the senatorial race. Ted Cruz versus uh, Beto. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Absolutely. All right, we'll watch that. And you'll be here to break it down for us uh, then in November, too. Thank yes, you for joining us Thank tonight. You. That's uh, Dr. David yep. Smith with AM Corpus Christi. Thank you for joining us. So if you missed any of the election results, and there are plenty, you can head on over to our website, ChrisTV.com. Right there, we'll have a full list of the primary races and tonight's returns.